lesson, I'm not talking about all the content that regards that. And I'm not doing that again this morning. And, uh, but you have two lessons in your notes. But let me share with you, in all, the way it stands right now, I just got my instructions. We will not be talking about uh, building on the sure foundation today other than a little bit. Next week is the fifth Sunday of the month. The fifth Sunday of the month, the kids come in. And I was listening, and I got my, I got a couple of, instru I got instructions for a couple of them. So I will try to pass that on. But we will be talking about it next week. So today, we're focusing here on baptism. Father, the, the Word of God is clear and explicit. It doesn't stammer nor stutter. It says what its intent is with the understanding that you will perform it when we trust you for it. That's how it stands in the kingdom of God. That's, we, don't, we don't buy these things. We get to participate with them because you share them with us. We don't qualify. We have nothing good to give you. Our holiness and our service is yours. It's your performance through us. That's exactly right. We need to recognize that. <laughs> our character will go on display, and our ministry that you give us each one will go on display. But that's not what earns us credits in the kingdom of God. Your smile of approval is there all right enough. Your teaching is there by the Spirit of God that guides us into all truth. May we pause in life and take the instruction of the Spirit of God as revealed by the Word of God and be sure on that foundation. You said, amen, that we are to do. We are to be baptized. So therefore, we're going to put emphasis on it this morning with your blessing and your help and your ministry by the Spirit of God. So be it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 6, 3 through 4, I'm just going to read them to you. Uh, know ye not, every time we read one of these know ye not, you ought to know. If you don't, you ought to pay attention. It's as simple as that, you know. Know ye not, that as many of you were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Hmm. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Very interesting here. We're baptized into Christ. We're baptized into his death. We died with him on the cross. We can scripture for that. We rose with him from death. Baptism is an external Result, external happening, testimony of an internal happening called salvation, called redemption, called whatever you want to, whatever redemptive term you put on it. Now, little Betsy had faithfully attended baptism classes. Her mother, wanting to be sure her daughter understood its significance, asked, Honey, what does baptism mean? Well, she said, it's not the water that makes you clean. Smiling mother thought, she's got it, she understands. Betsy continues, it's the soap. <laughs> now think about that for a minute. Baptism isn't always understood. And there's different views of it. So, we're going to take a few minutes this morning and begin to take a look at this. What happens at baptism? In baptism, simply put, we are identified as one of God's own. We establish by external evidence our position as sons, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ and our assigned ministry within the kingdom of God. Well, 
Someone presented a more complicated view, or at least a statement with more words. In baptism, we are initiated, crowned, chosen, embraced, washed, adopted, gifted, reborn, killed, and thereby redeemed and sent forth. I wouldn't argue with them on any of those. Ever born again believer should be baptized in water. This isn't in order to be saved, but rather because we are. They are saved. The scripture we had still probably have on the board right here. Know ye not that so many of you were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. Amen. Amen. That's absolutely right. Now, look at that. We should walk in newness of life. We should live in the newness of life. There is one other scripture in the New Testament that mentions newness, it's the same word, and that is over in Romans 7, 6. But now ye are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein ye were held, that ye should serve in newness of the spirit and not in oldness of the letter. So we're to walk in newness of life, serve in newness of the spirit. There has been a dramatic transformation taking place inside you. And in that transformation comes the ability to walk in the newness of life and serve in newness of the Spirit. Wow. Water baptism is an obedience to God's Word symbolizing your baptism into the body of Christ. Buried, raised from the dead to life. Do we actively look at ourselves? as being buried with him, actually as having died with him, buried with him, rose with him, seated with him. Boy. There is Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. Let's get the foundation here. There is one body... One spirit, you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Amen. <laughs> Don't you love that? God delivered just one faith to us, to the world. Now, I don't know how many there may be out there, but he delivered one. Wow. Wow. One baptism, one God, the Father of all. You, one God, the Father of all. Do you realize that links you with every believer? Every believer you're linked to. You say, well, I don't know if I appreciate that other one. Voila. What did, I, what did we say earlier the Father is? The Father is love. It's not a case of whether you don't appreciate him or not. It's a case of whether you love him or not. You say, have you ever had trouble? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. I had. I once was a forklift driver. Can you imagine me as a forklift driver in a factory? Well, it didn't last very long. <laughs> and, and various things happen. And I tell you, a man could get excited in a factory. If he, and I'd get excited. And I, I'd, go through, I'd go through there riding that forklift talking to the Lord about... Something need to happen to my attitude. <laughs> you, you never been bothered that way. Eh? 
He loved us while we were enemies, estranged and far from him. Do we have options? If he's abiding presence in us, do we have the capability of doing that? Loving. Not only the capability, it should be a part, it is a part of our very being in here. We need that expression outside, but I didn't come to talk about that. Exactly. We're one in a family. God's word commands us to be baptized in water. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16, 15 through 16. Lots of, lots of other words around that if you want to go read it. Pertinent words. But they probably will come again in other lessons. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19. Now, numerous examples in the book of Acts show how the early church spread the gospel and obeyed this command. The Bible makes it clear that faith in Jesus is a prerequisite for water baptism. Look at this. Uh, um, Acts 8, 36. Look at this one. Everybody know who Philip was? And on his way, he ran across this Ethiopian. Basically, she con he controlled the treasure for the queen, whoever. And uh, Philip, uh, the Lord told him, go attach yourself to that chariot or to that man. And Philip went. See, if we're going to be disciples, we're going to have to follow that inner direction. You say, what inner, that inner direction that jumps up inside of you becomes illuminated in your thought processes to know that there's something for you to do, something for you to say. It may be a simple word. It may be something else. It may even cause you to get out of your comfort zone. I went to church camp once. You did, yes? I'm, I'm, oh, I went multiple times, just for the record. But I decided I'd go downtown and get my hair cut. And I went downtown and got my hair cut. Now he said, tell him about me. <laughs> he said, well, did you hop right to it? I thought about it for a moment. I may even have thought about it for two or three moments. What did you do? Told him about Jesus. Did he do anything? Didn't say a word. They just figured out another one of them from out there at camp. <laughs> I don't know what they thought they didn't say. I don't. It wasn't my responsibility. Our responsibility when he gives us that is to sound a warning. It's not anything else. Sow the seed. How many times will it be sown? I don't know. You say, Lynn, you keep saying some of the same things over. Oh, yes, you got the point. We're sowing seeds. You know, the Spirit of God is so and see. I just loved it this morning. I, can I just, I was, when Mary said, he's in here. Yeah. Ha, voila! He's in here. She's right, that's where he's at. He abides in these physical clay pots, so to speak. It has arms and legs. But we allow him to be the head. We're members of his body. We need, we need to recognize our position. We're members of a body. Mm. Members of a body is, is surrendered to the head. It's the head that gives directions. Not complicated. The head gives directions. He knows better than we know. He knows what he's done. Not everybody is going to get excited about what you got to say. I told you the other day about being in a set of circumstances at the hospital and got a chance to share. What I don't think I've told you is the next session at the hospital, a guy sat down in front of me, about closer than from Warren to I, and said, uh, is so-and-so coming? He's a 
the other pastor is there on Monday. I said, no, he won't be here. It's Wednesday, and he only comes Monday, and he, it's time frame. He doesn't have time, and he'll come late Friday afternoon. And the guy just kind of looked at me and said some things and started talking to the guy sitting right there. And you ought to have heard the language. Okay? And I don't know what he was thinking about, what he was doing. I, but I'd heard that before. I, I, you say you say anything? No! I said something to him the two days before that. No question. The, the Knicks on Friday, he sat down in front of me, or sitting there when I was going out, and he says, is so-and-so going to be here? I said, be here Monday. And none of that attitude was in existence. You sow the seed, allow the Spirit of God to deal with it. He is infinitely patient. And he knows when they can hear it. And he knows when he wants them to hear it. Do you get excited? Do you, oh, well, what I want is not an issue. I just want to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. I'm, I'm not accountable for anything else. Wow. Okay, did we ever get down? Oh, so anyhow, he said, go to that chariot. Now, we'll find our place. And so he did. And began to explain to the Ethiopian about the Lord. And finally, they come to some water, and the Ethiopian said, uh, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, if you believe with all thy heart, you mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What did he do? He just confessed Jesus as Lord. He believed that. So they pulled up the chariot, went down in the water, baptized him, and Philip didn't have to walk back to the chariot. Bing, and out of there he went. You say, you ever been zinged out of there? No. Philip's transportation, transportation service, okay. <laughs> I like that. Uh, oh, boy. Okay. So you got the point? That's, that's the important part right there. Now, although water baptism is an important first step in the Christian life, it's not required for salvation. Now, some people will debate that with me. Uh, some, organ some, some places it's, it's baptismal regeneration, some places it's this, and some places it's that, and some other thing. But I'm, very simply this morning, I'm just going to point out a couple, three scriptures more or less, probably, and we'll go on from there. Those who, let's look at Acts 2.38, because we're going to have to deal with that if we're going to make a statement such as I just made. Then Peter said unto them, repent, give me the next three or four words. All right, you are one, you re repent, and be baptized, every one of you. No exceptions. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins and that you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody wanted to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. All right. So here we go. Now you say, well, you just proved the point. Well, have I? For is often used, often means in order to obtain but can also be as a result of, because of, since. This verse says, repent and be baptized. If, if you repent and you repented, what did you expect to happen? You was forgiven. Absolutely. You, uh, can you give me uh, Romans... Uh, uh, Yes, would you please? 10, 9, and 10, please. Because we're not going to go on this morning, we'll take a little time here, and some that we didn't intend to. 
Okay. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, what is the result of that? You're saved immediately. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You are saved. Saved. Simple as that. Watch the light goes on when you talk to people in that form and fashion. All right. It means to put your faith in the Lord as an internal action. And then an external expression of that inner change, you make public testimony of I being water baptized. What do you mean public testimony? Uh, Wug? I think he's sleeping. Are you sleeping? No, not can I use you? Can I use you and Donelda again as an example? All right. All right. Now I was around when Wug and Donelda was saved, or when they when they wanted to be baptized. You remember that? Well, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> you remember what happened? Well, I'm going to remind you if you don't. All right. All right. Here we go. So they wanted to be water baptized, so we went to a church that had baptistry, and in the water they went, and up out of the water they came. Well, everybody was happy. They were happy, and they went on about their business. At the point I heard the story, Wug and Donelda had always slept together in the same bed. Always except for that night. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> well, what happened? They were following what God said. Why did that happen? Somebody, uh, Roger and I was talking this morning out in the Oasis, and I said, we, we just shared with them. This baptism is an external testimony of what happened internally. Not only are you complying with the Word of God personally, you are also demonstrating before those who are there that I am a new creature in Christ. What I was in the past, I am no longer. I went down, I come up. I went down, I was buried with him. I come out of the water with him alive. Empowered. Recognized, headed for, seated, seating with him. All right. Now, who else would keep track of the events on earth? You say, the Heavenly Father. Well, absolutely. Him and his, those that minister for him. What about the other side of the aisle? He just lost two. Huh? I think it's, I personally think, I, I won't take you to Scripture because I, I don't know where any is. But I think this is not only an external testimony to everybody else, it's an external testimony in the realm of the enemy, the unseen realm. And what happens is, now you go on public, you went on public record, I'm changing kingdoms. The kingdom of the world is no longer mine. The kingdom of God I now enjoy to the fullest. The fullest as I understand it today, I'm going to, if you're standing around, I'm going to understand it more fully tomorrow. And I'm going to live this victorious, overcoming Christian life. And I just took the steps he told me to take. I'm complying. I will comply tomorrow. I will comply the next day with what he talks to me about. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh. And that gets a little bit exciting. Wow. Huh. So let me do this. The blood of Jesus saves you completely. Right? Okay. 
Water baptism is an external compliance and testimony to a finished work, to salvation, to restoration, to a new birth. What you're literally saying, the blessings of salvation in total are mine. Wow. It symbolizes the ransom that's been paid, the blood that has been shed, the victories that has been won in the grave, and where he takes back the keys of hell and death. I know, I know, you cannot lock me up anymore. You, it's wrong. It's wrong to be locked up by the enemy. Wrong. If I'm a child of God, I can expect better. Is that all right? All right. Lynn. Yes, I can expect better. I find, we, we go to the sheer foundation. We'll go there next week. But we take the Word of God and, and, and take it off the written page and put it in actual life experiences. We make it real in this new kingdom we live in. It's a ransom already paid. It's a sign of salvation. Wow. Everybody know Cornelius? Is, the record of Cornelius, is, part of it is in Acts 10. And uh, he's a Roman soldier. And uh, an angel wakes him up or comes to him and says, send, send, send a Joppa for Peter. He say, well, wait a minute. It's, when God's on your trail, supernatural things will happen. When you're hungering and thirsting for the things of God, supernatural things will happen. So he Joppa, sent a servant off to Joppa, and here comes Peter. Peter didn't know exactly what he come for, it seems, other than he's supposed to go with the guy at the door. So Peter packed it in. See, the divine guidance amongst his people gets supernatural benefits. So he went to Cornelius' house. Cornelius had his friends and near kinsmen all associated there. Peter began to preach a message of salvation, because certainly these guys need to be saved. I don't know what his reason was, but he did. In the middle of this salvation message, what happened? The Holy Ghost fell on them, and they began to speak in tongues and magnify God. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow, you say. Hmm. Had they received the water baptism yet? No. You know, God sometimes writes his own script. Huh? I just, don't you just love it? He don't have to do it the same way every time. I know, I know of a young man. He was about 24 years old. Had a wife and two kids when he was saved. The church he went to didn't have a baptistry, nor, were they, nor did they emerge people in water. Nowhere, where. It just wasn't done there. And... So this young man told the Lord, asked the Lord, he says, would it be all right? I he wanted to be dunked. Would it be all right if I, if I continue my spiritual life and when the first opportunity comes to be baptized, emerged, that he'd, he'd make himself available for that? Yeah, that would be all right. You know the outcome? Oh, I'm sure that you got emerged. Me? Did I say me? I've done my best not to say me. I got in the car one day in Stanwood and headed for Big Rapids, the back road, the back way up. And I, I mean, a singer I was not. And Matt, I, I've told you that one pastor said, every man come up and sing except Lynn, you stay in your seat. Uh, so there you are. But that morning, it was spring, the sun was out, and probably the birds were chirping, and it was just warm in the car and toasty, and I was just enjoying the circumstances, and I began to sing. Ah, you say, pretty? 
Mm, probably not pretty. <laughs> what? Huh? I think that's exactly right, Mary. God appreciated it. And all of a sudden, I was thinking words I had no idea what they were. I thought they sound strange and foolish and, and juvenile and, and on and on it went, I thought. But boy, it did something for me inside. It did something to my circumstances, my surroundings. It was just, it was a mighty pick-me-up. And so what, what was the outcome of that? After a while, I said, well, that's enough of that. And shut it off. Come on to town. Well, did you know what happened to you? Didn't have a clue. I'd heard about that stuff, but I, I didn't have a clue. What'd you do? I, never, I, I, I got into, well, okay, I got into a class. And in the class, I was the odd man out in this class. I had to drive from Benton Harbor to Kalamazoo to attend this class, and it was on the Holy Spirit. When they got to the 14th chapter, thir the 14th chapter, they excluded it. <laughs> I, I tell you, it, it's interesting. So anyhow, I, I said, it, they kept telling us tongues was a counterfeit. And I said, whoa, 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 just a minute, just a minute. And so I was the only one at the table, or two tables, whatever there was of us, that, that tried to insert. And here's what happened. I'll tell you the outcome of that. He, uh, the teacher uh, give, said at the conclusion of the class, he said, Lynn, I got some material here. You take it. You look at it and come back next week with a report on tongues. I was driving back down 94. And I was talking to the Lord about this. I said, this has got material for. I said, I can go in there into town in Dwajak and go to the Assembly of God and I'll get material for. I said, I don't want to do that. I want what you got to say about this. And I was probably the only person on I-94 that would pull the car over and write, <laughs> okay? And go down, pull the car over and write some more. Never did go see the AG pastor wrote this report, and went back the next week. <laughs> and here, and told them, and went through the report. And the closing line was, if there's a counterfeit, there is a genuine. I want the genuine. Didn't know I'd already experienced it. So what happened then? I was in a, uh, a, 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 I was attended a church of God, uh, an Anderson church of God. They didn't represent tongues either. And uh, the pastor was saying, somebody there, one of his pastor's buddies received. And I thought, well, that's enough. I think it's time. He said, well, so what did you do? I just got home, walked out to the old chicken coop that was pretty well beat up. The windows were out, and there was uh, still evidence of chickens on the other side. And what'd you do? I stood there and opened up my mouth, waiting for the words to come out. None time, just for the record. Well, what'd you do then? I looked out the window, and I seen the beauty of nature for some reason. And I thought, I'd like to express that, Lord. And I put air to it and began to speak, and here it came. And when, I, when that event was done, I said, ooh, that's the same thing that happened to me on, on that road. You see, if you knock, he opens. If you seek, you find. Right? I didn't come here this morning to talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, except, except here it comes. Are we done with this one? Okay, let's, let's move on to Acts 10. Uh, well, here, got, the same story we've given you. Can any man forbid water that they, should not be, that they sh should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And so they were baptized. Here's one story that has, last, has left a lasting impression in my life. And it's, it's taken from Acts 10, 47. Actually, put 44 through 48 if we can get them up in whatever way they come. Here is Peter. 
Wow. Let's read this together. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard the word, uh, and they all were circumcised, which believed and were astonished, as many as it came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they, how'd they know that? They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized, which has received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And commanded them that they tarry there certain days. Oh, boy. Hmm. Just a minute. Will you give me 1038, please? This is bro old brother Johnson, retired carpenter, uh, lived with his wife of many years, a retired school teacher, and he was a slow moving man. He was a slow-talking man. I, Ruth and I spent a lot of time with the family because they'd talk about spiritual things when people our age wouldn't talk, didn't talk. He got up one day and read the whole tenth chapter of Acts. Well, it's like the tortoise and the, tortoise and the hare, you know. He was plodding along, and me, I was springing out ahead of him. And you're right. I got to this verse right here, and he caught and passed me because I was still on it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I was anointed of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Power, he left with us. Woo! Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I could not get by that verse. He passed me because I could identify personally with it. Identify personally with it. Wow. Once again, water, baptized, water baptism symbolizes salvation already received. The next step after that is to be filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit. And God didn't intend for you to live for him on your own. <laughs> he wants to live through you. That, this includes by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Included in this abiding reality is the revealer of all truth dwelling in you. You say, well, just a minute. Let's go here. Uh, Matthew 3.13. Matthew uh, 3.13. Jesus said to John the Baptist, baptize me. That's paraphrased by Winans. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. And in 3.14, John takes exception to this. But John forbade him. I told him not so. Saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Matthew 3.15 and Jesus answered and said, Suffer it, permit it to be so now, for thus becoming us to fulfill, it becometh us to fulfill what? All righteousness. All righteousness. What do you receive when you're born into the kingdom? The righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said it was necessary for him to be baptized to Fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. He took the place of humanity. He did it as a son of man. Needed repentance and baptism and presented himself as a model of obedience. Now, he was baptized. What happened then? Then he got up out of the water, being baptized and praying Heavens were open, the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice from heaven said, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am, what? Well pleased. Well pleased. Luke 3, 21 through 22. There it is. I am well pleased. <laughs> he, he did it right. He was the Son of Man doing it for us. He did it as prescribed. 
Wow. Amen. Amen. Then as we have already read in Acts 10, 38. Wow. Wow. Build a sure foundation. We have been endued and will be endued with power from on high. I'm not going to go into much of, of, of the sure foundation this week. You just keep it. You can read it. We'll be back to it next week with the kids. But I will like to do this with you in closing this morning. Let's read 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Uh, if you got them separate, fine. All Scripture, if we're going to build on a sure foundation, that's the Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You may, under, you may have received God's righteousness, but you don't understand it when you received it. You're going to learn about it. <laughs> We all are. Amen. 317. Listen to this one. That the man of God. That the, are you a man, woman of God? Amen. Amen. That's, a, that's who he's talking to. Look at this. And the man of God may be perfect. Whoa. Completely ready. Thoroughly furnished, equipped completely unto all, <laughs> any, every, the whole of what? Good works. He qualified you to do that. Lynn, that's true. That's what the, that's, of what it says. Through his word, you'll get to know the awesome, loving God who has saved you. You grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus and come thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God will speak to you through the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory, loving you this morning. And thank you. Thank you. You're t we've been talking about who the people of God are. Made so, chosen so, by our Father, of whom all, all the family is named. Heirs of God. Sons of God. Join heirs with Christ. Amen. Amen. We love you. Thank you. Praise you. All honor and glory we give to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We got time to pray with anybody who wants prayer for whatever reason.